good friend of mine, season three of his IFC original horror comedy series premieres tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Perfect time for a Halloween treat. Stan against evils, John C. McGinley. How are you, Johnny C.? Never better. You say that every time. I'm God firm. Bless you. I'm fighting gravity. I'm, I'm resolved. I'm, my, I'm reconciled. <laughs> You're resolved and reconciled and yes. fighting gravity. Everything's nice and tight. Right now. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You're painting quite the word picture for our, uh, our radio That's listeners. That's how as I well. roll, Rich. I know that. You only know one speed, Johnny C. McGinley. On. I know that. And you are on the show right Let me ask now. You this. Did yes. you and Suze have any fun when you went uh, over the pond? We did. What we, did you get to do? We just hung out. No children. You know, one of the, it's amazing when you've got did kids. Did you get to fly, fly in the front of the plane on the way over? So when you went on the plane, did you take a left? Uh, yeah, hung the left turn. Yeah, you did. Hung the left turn. So you had about an 11-hour vacation on the way over, <laughs> which is the greatest. But it's amazing how we missed our kids the minute we left them and and thought about them like every single minute, especially when it was just like, you know what, be right about now, we'd be doing X, Y, and Z with them, and all we have to do is whatever the hell we want to do. It was great. We had a good time. I'm glad. We had a good time. That's a good trip. And it's just, you know, London was, by the way, we, we it's Tremendous it job on that broadcast. Let's not bury the lead. Thank Tremendous you. job. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. But I'll tell you what, like I would be walking down the street in, in London and it's a very large city. There would be like Jaguar fans and there's Eagle fans. It really was amazing. It's unbelievable. And why do Jags, there's four games next year. Yes, they are. already announced what they, they haven't announced what no, they are. No, I, I, but I'm why assuming. why Jags seem to be there? Because the owner of the team, Shad Khan, has, oh. I think, some business interests there, including potentially the purchase of the stadium in which I just called the game. Okay. Because um, he has a soccer team too. Yes, uh, so does Stan Kroenke, which is why the Rams have been there before. Um, it was the Eagles' first game ever on foreign soil. They'd never played one. When you came back, so. I don't know when your flight back was. If it was, Monday. was in daylight? It was. I arrived in daylight. Could you believe flying over what is going to be the Rams' facility? It is unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I know. The, the, uh, the sign... Uh, the uh, whatever whoever puts the money into for the uninformed the stadium, say say what we're talking about the, the 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 signage on the stadium the naming rights to the stadium they if they will put their logo directly on top or whatever anybody that flies into Los Angeles will know exactly whose that stadium is that is some piece of real estate it man. is it's huge it's huge um, I'm sorry about your Giants I'm sorry about yeah your so Giants. where do we go from here great question I don't know. I don't know because right now you can't even bench Eli for you the kid that Eli. just for the kid who just almost ran over a cop trying Plus to get through. Plus, that was a disaster wherever. last year with, with Geno Smith. Him. Yeah, right. it was a, that was a disaster. So, well, the problem with that last year is number one was the coach who did it, and number two is the guy who they turned to. <clears throat> it was is a guy who who G, New York fans had a front row seat for his struggles as a Jet quarterback. That Boy, was a problem. I got to tell you, when we got out of the gate beating a good Detroit team, who then goes on to beat New England mm -hmm. in Detroit. With all the shiny new toys mm -hmm. and everybody healthy, I, I thought we were off to a. I thought we were going to be eight and eight. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a good indicator. And boy, right. was I wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to even just say it that way. Let me pivot a little bit for you over here, Rich. Pivot, Johnny C. So now, me. with the playoff, yes. Chris and I were talking this before you, talking mm -hmm. about this before you. Yes. Do you give Central Florida, and I know your Michigan is oh. going to be on the bubble. Okay. Do you give Central Florida, after being undefeated for you two are pivoting. years? Yes. Let's say they win out, Michigan wins out, which they're going to. Mm -hmm. And so you have Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, yes. and, and Michigan with one loss. <laughs> if Michigan... Because LSU is going to uh, lose. Allow me, allow me, well, allow me to... Um, Do you put Central e Florida extrapolate, extrapolate here. Um, as somebody who has pounded the table for an expanded playoff field, I'm, I've allow, watched you and I agree with you. To allow a team like undefeated UCF in, if in the current construct of four four teams, Michigan beats Penn State this weekend, then Indiana, then Rutgers, and then actually finally does get past the Ohio State University for Wait, the first I'm, I'm time in they forever with Urban Meyer on the sideline. Yes. If that team then goes to the Big Ten championship game and vanquishes whichever team they get placed in front of them, only to be on the outside looking in because an undefeated UCF team gets in, I would take a pitchfork and a torch okay. and storm whatever gate I would actually have to have. Even that though they've be been undefeated for two years correct. and beat Auburn. Correct. Yeah, correct. Chris, wouldn't you? 
He what, agrees. UCF? Yeah, I mean, if if UCF... No, they have no chance no, against any of these teams. That's what I'm saying. They have no chance. A lot of people think that's the case, but no way. No way. I'm sorry. And then that's just the way that this, this, it's, cons- it's too this bad. thing is set up, You have to be in a power five. I'm sorry. And if you expand the playoffs, do you expand it to eight? Yes, damn straight I do. Same here. I, I, I give an automatic bid to whoever wins the regular season of whichever, because I'm eliminating the conference championship games. I'm taking them straight out because it just means absolutely nothing. So conference regular season champion. Just then, like old school. And three at just large. Just like it used and to three be. Three at, at large. Five, yeah. yes, the five teams that can yeah, win that. their divisions, they get in. Or if you want to keep, keep the conference championship games because for whatever reason you love them, then you make that an automatic bid. So you take a right. team You take a team like, say, um, Northwestern that Scrappy. has no shot of winning the Big Ten championship without a Big Ten championship game. Correct. They have a chance to win the Big Ten championship and go on and be a Cinderella, even though they might get there. You know How what's How is that beat. not great television? I would take it because you tell me this, too. Wouldn't you, Johnny C. McGinley, if it does not conflict with your stand against evil watching on IFC at 10 p.m. Eastern times? Well struck. Thank you, sir. Um, that wouldn't you sit there for all of Christmas weekend and watch four... 100%. First round playoff games in college football. 100%. And to, to to juxtapose that with, I skip a lot of bowls. I'm doing that already, though. I No, that's what I mean. So right. I'm already doing that. Right. And so now you're going to bring me back. I'm going to consume more content. Right. If you have uh, eight right. in a playoff. I'm watching every single one of those games. Would you not agree right now, Chris Brockman, that... Um, the bowl season right now is for two people. Who? The, the, the person who wants to watch their alma mater play their bowl game. Right, no, I'm oh, school enough, right. and, and gamblers. And gamblers. Yes, that's it. That's oh, all it's for. right, of course. And gamblers. It's basically and everyone people, who lost their shirt during the college football season a chance to win it back for the bowl. And figuring the that, they know, that they know Boise State's got a chance yep. in that Yankee Bowl. Yep. Even right. though they have no yeah. idea about the Yankee Bowl it's, or it's Boise State. It's the pinstripe, pinstripe. More, import- More importantly, okay. <laughs> so it, given Michigan wins out and they're the four seed, they yes. play Alabama, Notre Dame plays Clemson, the line on the Michigan game will be around 11 and a half or so. Against Alabama? Yes. Um, it's 14 and a half against LSU this weekend, Johnny. In LSU. Yeah, by so the way, I was saying. could Michigan give Alabama a game? Oh. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love them to. But see, here's can Clemson or Notre Dame give them a game? Can the Giants give them a game? (laughs) Now, hold on a second. The whole idea that the worst and I bleed giant blue. I know that. I am. I have never ascribed to the concept that the worst NFL team would lose to the best college team. Well, no. When you and I were growing up, or when I was growing up, they used to do this. You're young and firm. There was an (laughs) all-star game where the all-stars played. I guess the champ. Mm -hmm. Did they play the the NFL champ? Played against college all stars. How'd that work it was out? Gruesome. I bet. So that's what I'm saying. The whole everyone's like the 0 and 16 Browns would beat would they, lose to Alabama. No, they'd no, beat would, they'd beat no, Alabama no. by like 21. Course, I agree. At least, yeah, yeah. at least. See, but I, I guess just to bring this whole full circle, John, uh, is that it is still college football. There is still supposedly an academic reason why these kids are out there at these institutions of higher learning, and so. If we add an extra game, we're getting close to them playing a professional football schedule. We're getting close to what, what right? I mean, you've, you've put it in three uh, they're, they're playoff playing, games. They're playing 14 games, 15 games. So That's a bit of a ruse, though. And so, I, I mean, you're not, you're not hurting anybody. This is, these are the, these, this is the best period of your life if you're starting on Michigan right now. It's never going to get any better than this because you're not going to the NFL – you're not, this is it. Mm-hmm. Why not ride it? It's great. This is it. This is the good old days. Let them ride it. No, no, you're going to go to calligraphy class? Get out of here. <laughs> is that what you did? Did you have a calligraphy class? No, I wish. Under, <laughs> underwater basket weaving. I read, I read Dan sense. Rather's book years ago, and he said, uh, he said the, his favorite class he ever took at Central Texas or wherever he went right. was basket weaving. Come on. Yes. Dan Rather, Dan Rather actually took basket weaving. Yes, it was the best class he ever took. And it prepared him for... Be one of the great journalists of our lifetime. Everything. Sam Houston State. It prepared him for Good wars. Pull. Is that where he went? Sam, best, is, 
Will you check the current curriculum at Sam Houston State to see if it's now like in its 60th year of basket weaving? Right. Is there a one and a two basket weaving? Like, Was there know, like, like, basket like one, 101, yeah, 201, yeah. 301. Right, right, right. Where did you go? Did you go to? Did you go to? I went to. I was. I couldn't find my way, so I went to Ohio Wesleyan as freshman. Then I transferred to Syracuse because I wanted to do what you were doing. Okay. And I went. Did to you New, really? I went to Newhouse for a year, and I only got to write copy for upperclassmen. And I was like, <laughs> if I'm writing it, I'm saying it. And they're like, right. No, you're not. You're a sophomore. And I'm like, Okay, well then I'm out of here. So I went to NYU to be a storyteller, uh, undergrad, and then I stayed and went to NYU grad, which was kind of theater boot camp for three years. Yeah. And it was the greatest experience of my life. When you were at Newhouse, were there any anybody that you were with that actually did go into sports broadcasting or broadcasting? No. In, nobody. No. It's, you know how brutal it is. No. But I mean, that you, pretty much You're everybody's been there. You're a complete anomaly. Do you need a hug? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Hall of Famer. What are you looking for? Are you fishing for compliments for no, on a Wednesday? I am not. I am not at all. That is not exactly. That is not at all what I was oh doing. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, that the new house has churned out tons of people. Costas yeah, no, Bob. and Tariko yes. and uh, Marv Albert and Dick Stockton. Right? Isn't he a new Cream house? Cream of the crop. Sean McDonough. Uh, you, you, not me. I didn't go to New House. You didn't. Oh, you just went to Syracuse for yeah. basket weaving. Yeah. Is that what you did? I when was, I was uh, there at Syracuse, it was a grim year because um, the the Carrier Dome was under construction and the basketball uh, arena was also... Manly uh, Fieldhouse. The Fieldhouse was under repair. So all the basketball games were down in the Meadowlands and all the football games were down in the middle of Meadowlands. Are you this serious? This is when Art Monk was a senior. Uh, Bob, uh, a guy named Hurley, Buffalo Bill Hurley was the quarterback. Uh-huh. Meadowlands. So did you go to any games? Not one. Damn. How many money? Yeah, so you're not... Go down to Jersey with what? That's a long way. And those were good teams, too. Damn. So is 78, there 79, John? Something yes. Like that? Yeah. Exactly. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. I want to talk Stan Against Evil with you. I want to talk about so many things in your career. You're one of the greatest storytellers we have here on the program. Uh, and you want to do the news in the next segment, Chris? Sure, Brock? let's do okay, it. Okay, we're going to hang out with John C. McGill. Are we here. allowed to heckle and jekyll the news? Yes, you may. Oh, That's what you're here. Score. See, look, we're, we are allowing you, because I know this is one of the last things you've ever wanted to do, is to be part of a sports broadcast. We're going to let you live out your new house dream. Dude, you're my guy. <laughs> I know. We go Again. back, John. I, I, Again, I met you when hug? I first came out here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. We're going to hug it out. Here All right. I know this, what a man needs to hug. This is great. I do. Just come two here. men I'll hugging on the radio. There you go. There you go. Everything's okay. Uh, thank you. That's the one thing I never gave Zach in nine years. <laughs> I almost lingered. I almost lingered. You're only human. Okay, so John C. McGinley is here on the Rich Eisen Show. We're back with uh, his, uh, the news update, and I, I want to hear a couple of stories from your... Uh, you, you told a Steven Seagal story in the television-only segment. I would need to revisit that a little bit. All right. That's coming up next here on The Rich Eisen Show. Okay, welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show again. John C. McGinley here hanging with us. Stand Against Evil uh, Season 3 premieres tonight on IFC at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, just in time for your Halloween viewing. Um, you, you want to take a couple phone calls here on the show before we get to the news update? 100%. People, I want to, your, our, our college football chat and, uh, has inspired some, uh, some chatter. As you know, Rich, I'm a man of the people. Okay. Trey in Augusta, Georgia, you're on the Rich Eisen Show with John C. McGinley before Brockman's news update. What's up, Trey? Hey, Rich. Uh, I just heard you guys talking about the 18 playoff yes. and why you think it's the best. But my pitch is actually for six teams. How does that 16, work? 16, six. Um, and the reason for that is, and you get two buys, so number one, number two, get a buy. reason I don't like eight is because out-of-conference rivalry games become almost meaningless. So you have Clemson, South Carolina, you have Georgia, Georgia Tech, Florida, Florida State. If I'm the head coach of the team that's pretty much slated to go to my conference championship and I know that I'm going to get an automatic bid, why would I play my starters? Why would I try to win the game? And why would I do anything to risk my players getting injured when I already know I have a chance to get an on night bid? I'll listen off the air. Okay. Thanks, Trey. I appreciate it. The unintended consequence there. Well, I have a, I have a variable that could be introduced to that. Okay. Uh, strength of schedule would sometimes – I'm spitballing. Yes. Strength of schedule would sometimes mitigate conference champ. So if it's a flop year for the ACC, uh, could you spice in uh, a 10% – Strength of schedule component? I think for, for an at-large, obviously, for the at-large. He's pointing out that some people oh, yes, might turn down the competition 
uh, because it's out of conference when they're already set up to try and get in what they want to get into the dance through their conference championship game that they turn down, as he points out, Clemson, South Carolina. Although, wouldn't you think there's got to be some sort of recruiting component in there as well that you want to win those games to win the hearts and minds of the kids that they're right in your front door? Or doorstep? we could roll it back from not an automatic conference mm-hmm. um, invitation. That's true. It could be the five, the five best teams plus three at large. What are the five best teams? Probably conference champs. But what if it's a, a lousy year in like this year? What if it's a lousy year in the Pac-12? Boy, is it a lousy year in the Pac-12. So then maybe this is a year where there, there should be a, an out clause where maybe conferences, it's not automatic. You know, right now, the, again, last night, the CFB playoff rankings come out. And they not only tell you who the top four is, they tell you who the first two out is and then figure who out the what first the, two out now? Michigan and Georgia. Ouch. And so Michigan would play Washington right now in the Ro- in the Rose Bowl. Washington State. They play Washington State in the Rose Bowl right now. That's a good game. Yeah, Washington State is eight. That's a good game. Michigan, Washington State in the Rose Bowl. By the way, Sy- I, I, Syracuse is 19. Are you going to take out Notre Boy, Dame Syracuse or not? gave are, Clemson all they no, could eat. No, no. Are you, if we wouldn't have blown that game at Pitt, we would be in the top. You, you'd be in the mix here, 12, but are yeah. you going to beat Notre Dame? At Notre, at Notre Dame, right, Mike? He doesn't think? know. He's got no earthly You're idea. In Notre no, Dame. It's at Notre Dame. It's yes, Notre we're Dame. Gonna, I'm going to call right know. now. We're beating them. Because he wants to go to the game. Oh, is that? We're so, beating them. So why would you know that? We were talking about oh, you're it. Talking what about is it. Alabama and, and do, doing, aside from the obvious, what's Alabama doing better than everybody else? Is it just two two words, Nick Saban? Um, what are they uh, doing it's, better? It's one word, Tua. Well, no, what they're also doing is they... they, they Mariucci told me this, and I think I don't think I'm telling say? any tales out of school, that he spoke to Saban once upon a time about coming back to the pros. And Saban's like, well, I if I go to the pros, I get one first-round draft choice. And so do the 31 other teams. I stay here in Alabama. I can get five, wow. six first round draft choices. Why, why would I want to, you know, that's, that's what, and that's what they do better than anybody else. I they see. throw open the doors and they're like, who wants to come to Alabama? Every five star recruit in the South Damn wants straight. to go there. Right. Plus they get, they get a, a kid from Hawaii. That's right. And Tua. And look at him. Who comes to. But the thing is, normally they have four or five first round picks on defense, right? And then their offense just is just kind of there. They usually have well, a good I'd running say back. Say that to Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. Yeah, but they're, normal, mean, they're not normally the focal point when you think about that Alabama team. You always think about defense. Yes. And now they have a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback who doesn't even play in the fourth quarter. I, I increasingly think about from, well, from Yeldon to the kid on uh, New Orleans. I also Mark think Ingram. about it. It's, that's becoming tailback you. Derrick Henry. Henry was a beast. And what's happened to him this year? I, I, this is fun, chat. What happened to him this year in Tennessee? He was on the trading block yesterday. I was surprised he was oh. not moved. Because Deion Lewis fits that what they're doing right now. He right. does not fit what they're doing in Tennessee right now. Right. But that's what they do better than anybody is they throw open their doors and say, who wants to come to Alabama? And everybody who knows anybody who knows anything about talent, they'll still show up on the Alabama doorstep. And this kid, too, it looks like this week, most likely, yeah. more maybe, likely maybe, than not, maybe. What? will throw his first pass in the fourth quarter this year. He's not attempted a pass. He's, he dominates and sits. They score 50 points a game. I know. It's crazy what's Even happening. when they're not playing Little Sisters of the Poor, they <laughs> still score 50 points a game. Which is why I think they lose They lose to LSU this week. They, they, they still make the playoffs, and I think they should do it because that means they avoid having to take on Georgia in the SEC championship game and still make it. At any rate, 844-204-RICH, number to dial here on the show. Um before we get to the news update, stand against evil. Um, you shoot this. Where do you shoot this? Down in, in, Atlanta, in Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And if people haven't seen it, it's Archie Bunker fighting witches. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the high concept. If that if that floats your boat, tune okay. in. If not, all in the witches. Yeah, it's basically what it is. And so the, the interesting thing about what we've done with Stan, which is largely about tone. And what I mean is so horror comedy Horror being the exorcist on one end of the spectrum, which is really scary, but you can't drop a joke. Yes. And then Scooby-Doo, which is funny, but the threat is largely declawed. Yes. And somewhere in the middle there is an American werewolf in London, Ash versus Evil Dead, and Stan. 
And so it's a really hard tone to maintain. And we've shepherded it quite meticulously yes. because the jokes can completely declaw the threat mm -hmm. or if the threat's too great, it can cannibalize the jokes. And so somewhere in the middle there is where Stan lives and uh, we're just killing it right now. Who's the funniest person you ever worked with? Where they would crack you up? Uh, Rory Scovel on ground floor. Who's that? I'm sorry He's to ask. the funniest man I've ever met. No kidding. Yeah, he was in the last Amy Schumer movie. Okay. And Rory's the funniest guy I've ever met. Who's the funniest person I wouldn't think that would be the funniest? Like, did Pacino ever, like, crack you up or somebody? Uh, I would say... Uh, M Michael Douglas, underrated, who's coming here next Friday. Underrated as a comedian because of his timing and uh, is Bobby Cannavale. We, who walks on water for me. Uh, all of us here, too. Yeah. Bobby Cannavale. I think is, Bobby just crushes. He is And I don't so even think funny. he's hit stride yet. <laughs> and he's already crushed. I don't even think he's hit stride. You did... You did uh, um, the Mammoth play with him. We did right? a revival of Glen Gary, Glen Ross with on Pacino. Broadway together. It was the greatest experience of my life. Incredible. By far. Now, you said earlier that you uh, were directed by Steven Seagal on what film is this again? On Deadly Ground. On Deadly Ground. Uh, <laughs> uh, who is, a, who is a, a little bit crazier, him or, or Oliver Stone on the uh, crazy scale? Well, Oliver's not that crazy because he's so smart. Okay. Uh, and he is, in fact, the smartest guy in the room. He uh, is. And so if you can hew to his direction, Oliver's like a, uh, he's tantamount to a, a Kentucky, Kentucky Derby thoroughbred with blinders on creatively. And if you can get in that vision that his blinders are, are uh, dictating the parameters of, yes. it's nirvana. If you want to operate outside that creative vision, it's a little slice of hell. And since I've done <clears throat> six movies with Oliver. Six. Um, Six. Six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I've seen people try to operate outside the Oliver's vision for that particular piece. And so the, Oliver and Stephen are uh, two different creatures. Obviously. I, that, that's understood. But. And so if you can get an Oliver's creative vision for whatever, whether it's talk radio or platoon or Wall Street or any given Sunday, I could go on. Um, <laughs> but if you can get in that, uh, in that sweet spot. Yes. It's heaven. How'd you get in his radar originally? I auditioned for Platoon and I got a tiny role and then it went belly up and it was not shot for two years. And then when it was reconstituted two years later, Oliver offered me the fourth lead in the movie, Sergeant O'Neill. And we went off to the Philippines, revolution torn Philippines, and we shot Platoon. And it felt like you were at war, correct? We did a three week boot camp um, in revolution torn Manila. Mm -hmm. And then we started shooting the film largely in sequence, which is unheard of. So as people's characters died, they left. And so that started out eight times three is 24. So it started out with 24 of us. Um, and then by the end of it, there's three or four of us left. And that, that uh, diminishes how much the actors have to act because everyone is gone. You don't have to act like they're gone, they're gone. And so the lens suffers if you can reduce the profundity of a lie mm -hmm. in front of the lens, it, it experiences that as good acting. And so the way Oliver set it up, the arc of people's stay in the Philippines was dictated by when you died in the script. And because he shot it almost chronologically, as you died, you left. And so the actors who were left at the end of the film, uh, th those long faces and that, and that fear in people's eyes, because there was a a threatened coup every Thursday because the president did not have the military in her back pocket, a woman named Cory Aquino. There was always this well, threatening remember. buzz of a coup and there'd be no better person in a coup than American actors to take and, and, and use as whatever you need. Jeez. And so when someone calls action and all of these things are roaming around in one skull, the camera sees all that and it, and it cooks, it really pops in front of the lens. It sure did, man. It sure did. That movie was, it's still to this day. Yeah, he is. nailed that one. Oliver did two tours and he tore that film out of his sternum. And remember when we got home, the big hit and what people were experiences as a, as a war movie was Top Gun, which was kind of a Reagan era celebration of, uh, of, of mechanical war. And that's not what we shot. And so when we got home and Top Gun was the big hit, 
you know, we, we largely concluded that, that we wasted about four months of our lives. <laughs> and then it turns out that Oliver is going to release it at Christmas and nothing says Christmas yeah. like Platoon. <laughs> There's just nothing says Christmas like platoon, and so then it came out and and it did it did what it did. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable, John. That's amazing. Uh, in uh, you know we it's it's funny how we we mentioned off there. I'll, I'll mention here as well. William Daniels, the actor, uh, who you've never worked with, correct? He's not, I have not. I certainly know who he is. He's 91 years of age. Um, he, he he foiled a robbery in his house, and um, he was credited as boy meets world actor and I thought that that on behalf of those who watched him in The Graduate and St. Elsewhere and uh, 1776 it was an outrage for him to be described as that. Brockman you you, you knew him from a boy boy meets world. Big boy meets man. It's okay. Bofini. If you um, were ever in a similar situation where you fought, fought off an intruder and it's John C. McGinley fought off an intruder. Right. How, how would you want to be from your oeuvre? That's too easy. How would you want to be identified, John, John C. McGinley? I would want to be Down syndrome and special needs advocate champion there par go. excellence. It's the easiest go. thing on the planet. Because that's what you are when you're not that's an all actor. I care about. I know that. I know that. And it's our 50th anniversary of the Special Olympics this year, and I've been uh, invited to go give a, a keynote speech in Washington, D.C. on November 30th. Fantastic. For a big gala dinner, and uh, that is thrilling to me. You are the man. You are the man. At, at John C. McGinley uh, on Twitter, here on The Rich Eisen Show. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to do your news segment, Chris. There's big Saints injury news. Correct. Oh, how about them apples? I have no idea what this is all about. Am I gonna am I gonna be particularly disturbed by this piece wow, of information? Uh, I think it might affect things on okay. Sunday. Okay, very very fascinating. Uh, John Ooh. C. McGinley here, Chris Brockman's news update. Your phone calls at 844-204. Rich Jalen Ramsey, hour number three. That's how we're rolling here on the show. Check out again Stand Against Evil, season three premieres tonight on IFC. Just so you understand what you, you you've been here every single year. I mean, you've been here through every year of iteration of this program, which by the way turns four this weekend. So congratulations, uh, yes. congratulations to all of you. You sat uh, you you once uh, uh, um, sat in for me with Suze. Me, you, Suze you and, and I Suze. substituted yeah, one know. time. Big I, shoes it, to fill. We tried our hardest. Um, so the reason why is you you know what I I, I deal with on a daily basis. So you heard um, me ask those guys where Syracuse was playing Notre Dame, right? You yes. heard that question. And then they both confidently said it had to be at Notre Dame, as Mike Del Tufo said, because the game's at Notre Dame. He wanted to go, right? That's where you said that. Apparently, it's at Yankee Stadium. Oh. Thanks for playing. Yeah. Oh, really? It's oh, yeah. a home game for Notre Dame. But it's at Yankee it, Stadium? And it's not in the state of Indiana. It's in a state called New York. It's a home game in a for borough Notre called Dame. the Bronx. I'm completely wrong. You want to look it's that up? 161st Street. Yeah, they, you know, they've you won, they take two the six train to it. Yep. Oh yeah, the called four the, train. Pardon me. It's called the Shamrock Series. Yeah, that would be Notre Dame. Uh, that would be a home game. So this is what I do with. It. Yeah. My brothers and I are there. considering yeah, going to the Notre Dame Navy game next fall in Dublin, yeah, Ireland. Right. Now that would be a hell End of, of August. a thing to go see. We're giving that some thought right now. now Strong the, consideration. Now, it's, that's a home that's game, a, by the way. That's a home game <laughs> as well. That's a real home that's game. That's a real home game. That's a real home, a real home advantage. Home Should we go to that, Mike? Yeah, we're, I, we're, I would love to do that. Oh, please, go to Ireland. Uh, are you ready for the uh, news update? Like you read about please. it. Please. <laughs> now, that I've just, now that I have just laid out the accuracy like that you. emanates from that part of the studio... <laughs> It's Halloween. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking about candy. Up or you not. want to see they're playing here? Okay. Stop. I'm, think, I'm thinking about candy. Hit hit the drop, please. Go for it. And now. Brockman Jeez. with a special live report. Brockman with the news. Sponsored by the 2019 Honda Ridgeline. This tailgate all-star features an available truck bed audio system, dual action tailgate lockable in-bed trunk to start tailgating like you mean it. Hit your Honda dealer right now and check out the Ridgeline today christopher okay that saints injury news guys uh ian rapaport saying saints rookie pass rusher marcus davenport uh -oh. coming off his best game against the vikings two sacks of kirk cousins last week he's expected to miss about a month with oh. a toe injury yeah, yeah, yeah. after that they'll see how it responds he's in a walking boot right now obviously terrible news with the rams Coming into town. Let me tell you week. what. So the Rams get Dante Fowler Jr. and the Saints lose Marcus Davenport. Correct. Toes are no joke. 
Do you I'm, know? How, do I'm you, genuinely surprised. They call it turf toe sometimes. Oh, that, or, is, that is the worst I'm, name for whatever the injury that really it's is. It's the worst name. I'm surprised it doesn't happen every game at least a half a dozen times. Your it's feet, awful. You know, Dion, good night if your feet get hurt. Dion, who sat in here Monday, Dion Sanders didn't have any injury. Deion Sanders' career came to an end. His stellar two-sport playing career came to an end because of a toe injury. What do you say about it? Uh, you don't have to say anything. All he's got to do is take his shoe off, and Oof. you will look at it, and you will say, I cannot unsee that. Why, well, is, is stuff bent? And oh, it's one, not, it's not one toe goes over another, yeah, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but I don't even I, – I, I was not here. I was over Saskatchewan and Greenland <laughs> yeah, while he was yeah, doing the show. Yeah. He was, I bet you he was not, he was wearing mm. some soft shoe, right? Yeah, soft shoe, and he's, you know, kind of limping. To this day. Yeah. Don yeah. Bowie is saying he took his shoes off at the desk, which normally yeah. I would find a heinous act of oh, hygiene. Oh, but it's okay when Dion does yes, it? Yes, it is. Because number one, I know he's a showered individual. And number two, I understand it's an injury. Plus, he's one of the 10 greatest athletes of our generation. So no, you, you could, get a coupon. By the way, you could say five. You could oh. say top five. You're going to do top five? I would go Boy, Dion, that's tricky. Dion, Bo. Top five in the last 30 years? Yes. Sure. Wilt. Dion, Bo, Wilt. right? Who? Will Chamberlain. Well, I mean, if, if you're saying last 30 years. last th So if we're talking about 19, 1980 no, on. make it, right? 1980 yeah, it, yeah, on. Yeah, it's 80 on. Sure. Right? Would you throw Jordan in there or no? You wouldn't throw Jordan in I there. I think you have to. I mean, just in terms Speed, of athlete, Speed, quickness, right? athleticism. Do you put a track athlete in there? Do you yes. put Carl Bolt? Lewis in there? Bolt, Usain Bolt? Carl Lewis. I think Carl's a, a better athlete on this list than Usain Bolt. Okay. Ooh. Athletically, long jump, 400, 200, 100. And the fifth? Is tricky. Fernando Valenzuela. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this thing on? Bartolo Colon. <laughs> Bartolo Colon is America's sweetheart. He is. Okay, yeah. one of the big movers uh, in the <laughs> NFL good. trade deadline yesterday, the Philadelphia Eagles went out and grabbed yeah. Golden Tate to add to that Love offense. that move. Great move. Yep. Howie Roseman said uh, why he's making that move. You're always trying to get the best price. There's no doubt about it. But uh, we're not trying to win the trades. We're trying to get really good yeah, players. Good and uh, the message to our fans, to our players, to our coaches, to everyone in this organization is our foot's always going to be on the gas. Um, we're always trying to win. We're always going to try to put our best foot forward. And what we can do now is try to do that for this season and this moment. And that's what we're going to do, and that's our responsibility. Love it. Foot on the gas. Yeah, he went to, he went to Notre Dame, yep. and his real name is Golden, a Golden Domer named Golden Tate. You know what's interesting? His, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken, you know in the old days, if your father was a, a, a cobbler, if your father was a, doing shoes for horses, you largely would? Yes. I think his father was his high, the high school football coach. And what, what mm -hmm. spawns you also determines what you are not in all cases but sure. i love when that is the case now he is um i mean how are you not a, imprinted by that correct i don't know what howie roseman's dad did but um probably made moves i made moves maybe he's an agent i don't know yeah. I have my, no other, idea. my other favorite along ilk uh, along that ilk is when people's names reflect their job mike quick being, of course, by the way i saw him top he, of the he, he's heap. A, he's a broadcaster for the eagles i saw him in london mike Quick. Quick. Oh, nice. That's right. Yeah. The greatest thing ever. Well, Butker. Harrison Butker. Yeah, the Butker. He's the butt kicker. But also the kicker Dick, the... Dick Butkus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, of course that's his name. Of course One of the greatest is. names of all time. Uh, as we've mentioned this weekend, Packers, Patriots, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, a showdown everyone wants to see. Mike McCarthy was asked about that today. Well, and I, I think this is clearly going to be right there or, or maybe the best ever. I mean, the Montana John Elway, it, it was something that I was – in New England or in around 93, 94, and you know I just recall you know the Monday night game up there where, or you know we had, we um, went down and scored and then John, Kansas with Kansas City and John took us right, John Elway took them right back and scored and Joe took the you know Chiefs right back down and scored there at the last play so you know remind me a little bit of the game we played against San Francisco so um, but yeah I think I think uh, you know the irony of it is they don't play against each other. Why'd you choose that soundbite for your news? I just wanted just, to. I, mean, I just, just wanted like to. That was just him just going through the, the list of, of things. Okay. And, it just, and it just further illustrates what Aaron Rodgers is dealing with on a <laughs> weekly basis. <laughs> okay. That he's able to be so great all the time when this is the man in his ear calling plays.
<laughs> poor, I mean, poor, just, poor Packers fans. What are they poor? The guy won him a Super Bowl years ago. He coached him to a Super Bowl. I don't Bowl. think it was because of anything Mike McCarthy did. When Boy. you have number 12 out there, and so, Greg Jennings is coming in. When did Mike week? McCarthy turn into the uh, the David Blatt of the Green Bay Packers? When did that happen? When did when did he become the guy who just rolls the ball out and it just it's? That's a good question. But if Packers fans want to call us and tell us, please no, do so I, I, because look, 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 look. I don't know a Packers fan who likes Mike McCarthy I, right now. I know. And my, by the way, I was about to do until he just started rambling on. I was going to do a what was he really thinking? Go ahead, hit, hit me with what, what was it? It's a new. It's a segment we do every now and then. John. What were they really thinking? Well, here's what I was really thinking. When you ask me about uh, Aaron Rodgers, I want to equate him with some of the greats of all time. Certainly, the guy in terms of Tom Brady, because uh, I think he kind of hates my guts right now. That's what he's really thinking. I mean, that's the narrative, right? That they can't stand each other yeah, and they're yeah, winning yeah, in yeah. spite of each yeah, other. Yeah. And that Aaron Rodgers, if he play uh, the, the headline that I saw right now is uh, uh, recently that uh, Belichick would have he'd throw for seven thousand yards in a season. Right. If, if he had McDaniel's and Belichick and on ESPN right now, it's a what if of what if oh. Rodgers played with <laughs> one of my Patriots. bucket list stadiums is and you've been there, so Lambeau? this is a question: Lambeau. Is Lambo unbelievable? What is when you say people always do that? What's so special about it? Because it's in uh, it's in um, well, first of all, that you know who's played there before. Okay, so you know that that's hallowed turf, uh, and then Fuzzy just, Thurston and making just, the block. It, it's it's similar to um, let's say Wrigley, in the fact that it's old, in the fact that you're driving. There is a Kmart. There's a gas station. There's a stadium. Oh, in the same way of Wrigley, you know, there's a house. There's a house. There's a stadium. Right. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. How many people? Seventy. Seventy thousand. It's more Less. than that. Yeah, they've expanded over the years. Yeah, they so. have. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's, so my, you should that's, go. that's one of my bucket list stadiums. It, it's, a, it's a bowl stadium, right? It just goes up. And there's, there's nothing, no tears there's or anything nothing like that. When we've been there watching Mariucci try a Lambo leap and, need, <laughs> and needing help <laughs> yeah, to get yeah, up. Yeah, right. That's right. high. That is a high fence, Have you man. tried it? I did. Did you, you got the ups, though. Oh, my God. No, it was terrible. I have no ups. You have no ups. I have downs. All that speed you generate. generate. I have no ups. Oh, speed. All yeah. that velocity. Yeah, the physics. Velocity. You can't convert that into a vertical leap? You know what? The physics are against me. Really? Yeah. Couple quarterback news: uh, Jags are signing Glandry Jones as an insurance policy. There's Come some concern on. about Blake Bortles' health uh, following the London Matt game. Matt Barkley's a bill, isn't he? Yeah, Matt Barkley, uh, one-year deal to the Bills because Derek Anderson has a concussion. Can we Not sure out? if he's available. Nathan Peterman going to start this week. El Zorro, can you tell me the record? For an NFL team, it doesn't have to be for this show. If you can get it by the end of the show, great. If not, then for the end of this week, and I'll let John C. McGinley as well know later on. The record for different number of quarterbacks to throw a pick six in a season. Wow. For, a for one team. team. Did Josh Allen throw a pick six? I think he's had. So if that's the case, then Peterman, Josh Allen, Derek Anderson just and then did it. Barkley eventually, maybe. The kid on the Jets did it his first pass. Did right? he? Did he ever, yeah. Sam Darnold did, I know. Yeah. Then he beat the Lions. Then he beat the Lions. A weird story. The Jimmy Butler thing just keeps getting weirder. Uh, Shams is saying that Butler is uh, taking the next step in a six-week-long process aimed at getting him out of Minnesota. He's going to sit tonight against Utah and could lead to an extended absence. What is six? What do I mean six weeks? Has he really mapped it out? I think he has like a six-week right. plan. Week to get one, out I'm of sitting out. Yeah. Week two, I'm going to absolutely verbally destroy Carl Anthony Towns in practice. <laughs> week three. I'm going to go on the jump in Los Angeles, and I'm going to throw everyone under the bus. Week four, I'll just take off. Week five, I'm going to yeah. score 50, and then week right. six, I'll, I don't It's a hell of a six-week so six program. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Um, okay, and then, story. And then so, quick baseball, David Price exercises player option, of course. He's got $127 million left, and Clayton Kershaw has until midnight tonight, right. midnight tonight. to decide on his two-year $65 million extension with the Dodgers. By the way, I go trick-or-treating in his neighborhood with the kids. Well, maybe you should so ask him. So maybe I'm going to ask him yeah, for ask the him fun the size. Is. I want only fun size candy. And uh, let me know. I'll break the news. Fun, some peanut butter cups. And break then, the news uh, to Mr. Incredible. I'll show up. <laughs> Do it. Uh, great to see you, John C. McGinley. Tremendous to see you. I love this. Come back anytime, even when you're not promoting anything. 100%. I'd love to. I'd love to have it. I, I, I don't just say that willy-nilly. I mean it. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> Great question. Uh, check out IFC's Season 3 of Stand Against Evil tonight at 10 p.m. and then every single Wednesday thereafter. Eight new episodes back-to-back -back every Wednesday at 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Follow them on Twitter. I do at John C. McGinley. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.